We are back. It's the Joe Holka Show presented by Line Movement. Excited to do this segment live for the first time all year. It's week 14. It took us this long. Obviously, if you're listening to this on the podcast feed later, kind of wondering where the video is this week. This is the video that is only on the Line Movement channel after the fact, but now we're going to be live on the Joe Holka YouTube channel. Kind of confusing, but one thing that's definitely not confusing uh, is my good buddy TJ Hernandez is going to join us again. He's the director of DFS at 4 for 4 Football. TJ, how's it going, my man? Welcome. This is the first time you've ever been live on my stream before, so uh, welcome in, my man. Yeah, man. Excited to be here, as always. Uh, excited to get the bad week 13 taste out of my mouth. Yeah, dude. It feels like just <laughs> getting uh, some of the, the demons out a little bit is a little bit easier sometimes uh, in the DFS world. Now, like all these people, like it's one and done in playoffs or season long. So uh, I know you've been kind of out of the season long streets uh, at like a high level for a while because you're just so focused on DFS and stuff. But you have anything going on uh, this week? Any playoff teams going? I do have, I'm, I'm, I'm top 10 in Scott Fishbowl. So if anybody's Let's interested go. in that, make sure you follow along. And I got uh, quite a few teams through in the best ball mania. So maybe in uh, my next appearance, I'll be talking about a quarter million dollar win from um, underdog. That would be fun. That would be great, man. Did you play a lot of uh, best ball stuff this summer? I know you got kind of deep into that for a little while. I mean, I always play a lot of, uh, I guess you call them cash games, but uh, I, I made a, a kind of late run at Underdog's big tournament. Um, they have a quarter million dollar um, uh, first place prize over there. Um, so, you know, taking it, that down would make 2020 uh, a little more palatable, I think. Yeah, for sure, man. We'll have to we'll have to have you on like in the off season talks of best ball stuff. So definitely, uh, definitely sure. something I want to do more of in the future. Uh, but no time for that, man. Uh, this is our week fourteen locks of the week. Uh, we're going to go through each position and we're going to go through uh, the favorite pick at each position. Just from TJ's perspective, uh, you probably want his perspective at this point of the week anyway, because he just finished all of his content for the week, right? I love getting yeah, TJ man. on a Thursday because it's like I can see the relax Perfect. in his face, basically. He's like <laughs> yeah. through like the worst part of the week overall. Uh, we just finished yeah. up uh, the stacks video, so go and check that out. This went up on the channel earlier uh, this morning, uh, but your quarterback is actually one of our top stacks. So let's talk about Matt cool. Ryan. He's 5,700. Just feels too cheap in this spot, doesn't he? Yeah, he's uh, priced down as the quarterback 14 in a game against the Chargers with an over-under at 49.5, a, a spread of just 2.5. So I think if people look at the over-under or even the implied totals in this game, they might not jump off the page because we do have a lot of teams uh, in games with 50-point over-unders, but a lot of those spreads are, are pretty big. Uh, the only one that is this small is the Colts and the Raiders. So if we're looking for one where there could be a shootout scenario uh, on both sides of the ball and that keeps going through all, all four quarters uh this is the one that i'm looking at both of these teams rank in the top 10 in neutral passing rate over the last six weeks uh, both teams bottom five in deep balls allowed that really sets up well for uh our shootout scenario that we're hoping for and the chargers 30th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to opposing quarterbacks uh they rank six in raw fantasy points but uh going back to week seven multiple touchdowns allowed to garner Minshew, drew lock Derek carr tua flacco uh that isn't a murder draw of quarterbacks to be given up multiple touchdowns to uh so they are a team that uh they've been a little bit banged up they play a lot of zone coverage which the falcons have been very successful against and obviously one thing we're really looking for here is julio jones julio didn't practice wednesday or thursday but i don't think julio's practiced since 2017 so he <laughs> yeah. he played on uh, on the same injury that he's not practicing on right now and him and calvin ridley they've only played five games full games together i cut cut it off at 70 percent snaps but they both had a couple games where they only played like 30 percent snaps in those games where they play basically full run of snaps Falcons averaging 28 points when they don't play full games, averaging just 24 points. So that's a pretty big drop off there. Yeah, it's like a, it's such a condensed target share overall. Obviously, both of those guys, when healthy, uh, should command uh, a lot of the target share there. I looked into like what their correlation is together, and and you said it, man. Like the the sample size of them in games healthy together is so small that I'm not sure it's really even relevant. Anyways, Matt Ryan just feels way too cheap in this spot. We've seen these Chargers games mm -hmm. kind of shoot out throughout the season overall. It does feel like a really decent bounce back spot for Herbert and the Chargers overall. I think Austin Eckler is going to end up being super popular. At running back uh, if you were to stack up uh, a matt ryan julio or a matt ryan uh calvin ridley do you have a preferred bring back we went through that earlier but i'm curious your thoughts on it yeah i mean it 
obvious the obvious guy is Keenan Allen because of volume, but he's going to be taking up so much of salary. If you go with a, mm-hmm. a Julio, um, even if you go double stack Julio, Calvin, and and then Keenan Allen, you're just taking up so much salary. They have to have like crazy outlier ceiling games to to make up all of that salary. Um, I mentioned the deep ball rate, the the um, Falcons bottom five in deep balls allowed. So that sets up for Mike Williams really well. I like his salary relief. He's probably um, my preferred play there just because of that deep ball action. But I'm throwing. Uh, Hunter Henry in the mix as well. He is top two in red zone targets over the past six weeks, trailing only Darren Waller. So I think if if you're bringing it back, uh, if it's a single stack with Julio or Calvin, Keenan Allen is fine. If it's a double stack with both of them, I want to bring it back with one of those later guys. Love it, man. Definitely have to be cognizant of the salary with some of those guys. But I mean, it's nice having a cheaper quarterback in Matt Ryan if you do want to make that work. Uh, so I mentioned Austin Eckler at running back is going to be extremely chalky. One guy that's probably going to be even more heavily owned this week is your running back lock of the week, Derrick Henry. He's 8,700. Um, obviously, if we have A.J. Brown banged up in this spot, probably just more touches for Henry overall. But tell us uh, why you're willing to spend up for the big dog this week. Yeah, I mean, as far as ownership goes, um, I mean, you have to keep an eye on on Christian McCaffrey's status. If he's healthy, he's obviously going to cut into the high-end ownership. Uh, throw Dalvin Cook in there as well, but I don't think Dalvin Cook will be super owned. So Henry should still be the most popular guy out of that trio. Uh, 8,700 against Jacksonville, so still very expensive. But the ja- uh, I'm sorry, the Titans are favored by 7.5. Jacksonville, if we adjust for strength of schedule, uh, they rank 30th in schedule adjusted fans. Fantasy points allowed. Only two teams have allowed more 100 yard games to opposing running backs than the Jaguars. Uh, that's obviously something we need from Henry if we're going to play him on DraftKings because he isn't going to catch a lot of balls. But if he does get you that bonus, that makes up for it a little bit. I mean, it's it's not you know it's not eight points that you might get from a pass catching running back, but those extra three points definitely uh, cannot hurt you. Tennessee has the fourth highest run rate in neutral game scripts. So we know that they're going to pound uh, Henry and they do have the third best offensive line run blocking offensive line in the league. If we look at uh, football outsiders adjusted line yards. So everything's setting up really here for a smash spot for Henry. The only thing, I mean, maybe we'll get a little bit of ownership relief because he didn't blow up against Jacksonville like he was supposed to in the first meeting. So maybe we get some more casual players uh, looking at that player versus team narrative and, and being a little scared, but that's not bothering me at all this week. Yeah, I mean, Ryan Tannehill last week, season high 45 pass attempts, uh, but they were behind like basically that yeah. entire game, right? So I guess a little bit of a reminder of the floor of Derrick Henry if things go mm-hmm. like terribly wrong, but I, I don't think this is a spot we really have to worry about that uh, with Jacksonville. So if anyone is like, I guess, looking at what Derrick Henry did last week, looking at the salary and being like, ah, I think I'll pass, uh, this might be uh, a week to get back on Derrick Henry, eat some of that ownership. So totally with you on that. <laughs> If anyone's here for the first time, obviously, we'd love it if you would consider subscribing to the channel, toss a like on this video, all that good stuff. Uh, But I want to mention at least one time uh, before Peter gets here and he just doesn't let me get a word in the Patreon. Uh, So this is something we've been building up uh, since about week nine, week 10. Uh, It's our premium Discord chat community, fantasy sports, uh, fantasy football, DFS, sports betting. We basically hit on all of it uh, in the conversation over there. We do have an exclusive weekly DraftKings tournament. That's been a lot of fun. Uh, Some bragging rights in the chat that sort of thing. Uh, we're giving away a $30 Amazon gift card most weeks. This this past week, I'm actually going to be adding a dollar to the prize pool for every rating and review that I get on Apple Podcasts. And then we do have uh, an NFL Red Zone stream room. So if you're in there uh, trying to figure out, uh, I guess, how your teams are doing, sweat the games with us as a community. Uh, and then I do a 15 to 30 minute live stream exclusive to just the Patreons in our Discord. It's not on YouTube. Uh, it's directly before kicked off. My final, final thoughts, some may say. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to your wide receiver at lock of the week. Marvin Jones, 5,800. Uh, he's a guy that I haven't just played a ton overall, um, but I'll say this. like The defense is so bad for Detroit, and this game is mm-hmm. one that we expect there to be a ton of scoring on both sides. Uh, so it sounds like um, probably somewhat of a game script move here, but 5,800 for Marvin Jones and like a very condensed target share as well seems like a great play. 
Definitely a game script moved. Also, just something, I mean, we're recording this on Thursday, so there, there's news we're waiting on. If A.J. Brown doesn't play, obviously Corey Davis gets a huge bump, and then we have uh, a lot of question marks in Carolina with, with COVID and injuries to their receivers. So uh, one of those guys can end up being a lock. But as of Thursday, Marvin Jones is someone that really stands out, at least salary-wise for me. Uh, his volume has been through the roof over the last month. He's averaging 10 targets per game over the last four games, double-digit targets in three of those games with 12 targets in the last two. Uh, you mentioned the game script here. The, the Lions are going to have to throw to keep up uh, with the Packers. And it's probably not a coincidence that over the last two weeks, uh, Matthew Stafford is tied for the lead, league lead in deep balls. Those are passes 20 or more uh, yards downfield. We saw it a lot last year when the Lions brought in Daryl Bevel. Uh, we saw Stafford as the league leader in deep rate through eight games. Obviously, he got hurt. Then they come into this season. Who knows what happened with, with Matt Patricia and him just wanting control or running his run first office, whatever it might be. Now, all of a sudden, we see Stafford spiking again with that deep ball. That's going to help Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones is top 12 in target share over the last month that I uh, referenced, and he also leads the league in air yards in that span. So uh, a lot of upside and a lot of volume here in a game where Detroit should be throwing quite a bit. I think there's something to be said for the mindset of some of these guys, especially Marvin Jones, who came out and basically just said he hasn't had fun playing football in so long. So just feeling better about himself. Uh, obviously a tough spot against Green Bay, uh, but division matchup, easy to get up for it overall. So I'm with you. It just feels a little bit too cheap in this game where we think there's going to be scoring. At the very least, there should be positive game script for the passing side of things for Detroit. So uh, love that. Uh, we're going to stay in this game for your tight end lock of the week, Robert. Tanyan. He's 4,200. He scored a touchdown in three straight games. Sometimes that's basically all you need at the tight end position. Obviously, this massive total that Green Bay has, it's one of the things we really want to focus on at the tight end position overall. Uh, but tell us why um, Robert Tanyan, tight end lock of the week for week 14. Yeah, I mean, really, it's because if you aren't playing Kelsey or Darren Waller, you're really just looking for scoring upside. And and this is a way to get affordable exposure to uh, a team that's going to be very popular. I mean, we haven't talked about the Packers at all, but uh, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, uh, even Aaron Jones will probably all draw some ownership and for, for really good reason. Uh, but Tanyan is a player that, I mean, five targets in three straight games at this point in the year where uh, tight ends has just not been a position that's easy to figure out, that is actually pretty decent volume. And and I know following touchdowns can be chasing points a little bit, but this is the most efficient passing game in the league. And if he is getting consistent usage in this offense in a spot where Detroit has really struggled, they haven't necessarily struggled against tight ends, but their defense has just been really bad and there's going to be a lot of scoring opportunities. That's really what I'm looking for in these situations where we have a just an ugly tight end slate. I mean, every week's an ugly tight end slate at this point. Yeah, and if you're going to be trying to correlate this game overall, sometimes it's just nice to knock out the tight end slot and at least know you're adding to your correlation of your lineup overall. I know that if you're running out cash games, that might be not uh, like kind of your your first priority, um, but it's something I've been trying to do in tournaments with this position sure. that's been pretty rough overall this year. Uh, so let's talk about another position that definitely has kind of carried a, a decent amount of variance, uh, but this is a defense that has been improving, has been pressuring a lot more recently. Seattle Seahawks, they're 3K, so you're spending up a little bit here, TJ. Tell us why. Yeah, I mean, I'm spinning up, but it's not like all the way up at $4,000. I was actually really surprised when I saw the the uh, Seahawks salary on DraftKings this week. We have six teams, I believe, on the slate favored by at least a touchdown, but we have Seahawks favored by almost two touchdowns, 13 and a half point favorites over a Jets team that uh, bottom three, if we adjust for strength of schedule and points allowed to opposing defenses. And a lot of that is because their offensive line has really struggled bottom five in adjusted sack rate allowed. And you mentioned Seahawks getting pressure a little bit more. So if you have that big of a favorite and they're barely priced, I don't even think they're priced as a top five defense. I think they're the defense number six. Uh, that's actually a value. I know spinning up at DK is often pretty hard to do at defense. All that the the floors at tight end and defense can be really intriguing, but uh, that's just a, a little bit too cheap. We've seen a lot this year. Those teams that do break that uh, favored by 10 or more, oftentimes they're close to $4,000. So uh, I, this one was really surprising for me. Uh, I think it's going to fit with some mini stacks. Uh, Chris Carson is a guy that I think I'm going to be looking to uh, 
in tournaments this week, and it's not a stack that I necessarily force, but if it makes sense and it works, uh, I, I think that's one that I really like. Yeah, I actually have them projected for the second most stacks on the entire slate right now. Obviously, uh, nearly two touchdown favorites right now. So on board with the Seattle defense, like you said, 3K seems like a little bit expensive when you're just in cash games, like I guess conditioned. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, just paying down whenever you can. But I mean, just finding that extra $300 in salary to get to a spot uh, against this Jets team uh, definitely seems like a, a decent way to go. Uh, so TJ, I got one more question for you. I know you're playing a lot of tournaments these days as well, and you've kind of finished uh, most of your research at this point is there a favorite like leverage spot or tournament play that kind of stands out to you obviously on this video we're going through what some of the optimal types of stuff is or where to start your lineups but uh where are you at right now if there was one or two guys that kind of stand out from a tournament perspective yeah i mean i, I think a, kind of staying in that same game we talked about i don't think he's going to be super low owned but uh I think Tyler Lockett could come in with half of the ownership as DK Metcalf. So uh, he really interests me a lot. Um, again, I, I'm not sure how uh, low owned he'll be, but if you can get him at like sub 15% in the super smash spot, uh, where I, I think people are just a little bit cooler on that, that passing game than they should be. Um, I mean, they're still probably going to be very popular, but they've just been down a little bit. Uh, that's a really good spot for me. And then every week I'm, I'm just kind of looking for a spot to uh, leverage the chiefs or leverage the chiefs game in general. I think both running backs in that game are, are very interesting. Clyde Edwards Hilaire after being active and then not playing um, on national TV last week. And, and Le'Veon Bell just looks awful. I mean, no efficiency, no burst before CEH didn't play last week he had finally got back to that like 60 65 percent touch share so obviously a lot of scoring there and then chiefs aren't good against uh running backs so uh miles gaskin there um as well i mean you could play two running backs in the same game in tournaments and that's one where i think you're going to get a lot of leverage on the big three for the chiefs tyreek uh mahomes and obviously travis kelsey yeah, I, I love the idea of Gaskin in general this week because he has like, what was it, five or six touches inside the five yard line last week, doesn't mm -hmm. convert any of them to touchdowns. So like even just looking at his price alone, like he he would be, what, 6,200, 6,300 if he converts one of those into a touchdown. Sure. Uh, so I think it's just a pretty decent price discount for him. Uh, people don't realize that the correlation of running back versus opposing running back, like people avoid it. But these guys that are game script independent, it's not really like a spot you have to completely just avoid it overall. So I, I love that call. I think both. Yeah. Those guys will be pretty low on, but together, uh, nice leverage there overall. So TJ, first time uh, doing this live. Uh, I think we uh, we didn't butcher it too bad, so I appreciate you, my man. Uh, <laughs> definitely uh, follow TJ on Twitter. He's at TJ Hernandez. Uh, check out all the great work he's doing over at 4 for 4 Football. Any final thoughts, my man? We'll get you out of here. Uh, no, nah, man, just uh, good luck to everybody. And and uh, yeah, hammer, uh, hammer those leverage plays we talked about. I think this is going to be a really fun tournament week. All right, buddy. We'll see you soon. <laughs>